Hey, what's up garden friends? Hi Toby, how you doing? How are y'all doing? I hope you're good. I'm great. Time to get to winterizing the caladiums. I did a caladium video over the summer and it was kind of a long one because it was an overall care video for these plants. And I did talk briefly in that video about what to do with these during the winter time. I've had a lot of questions though since then. So I figure I'm just gonna go ahead and do a shorter video that's specific to winterizing caladiums. What to do with your plants during the winter time. And this plant right here, this is actually the same caladium from that video that I potted up, the frog in a blender. No, it's not looking good, but this is actually what's to be expected. Once temperatures start to drop below 60 degrees and they're saying steadily below 60 degrees Fahrenheit, then their leaves will start to shrivel and yellow and they'll start to kind of die back on their own. And this is when I go ahead and lift them. It's generally once the ground temperatures start to get to be around 50, that's when it's time to get them up and out. They don't like frost, so really it's best to go ahead and once you see this process happening, get them up and out of the ground. And I am talking for people who are north of zone eight, below that usually just like let them die back to the ground, pull the foliage, throw some mulch on them, they'll normally be okay. But anybody who lives places cooler than that, then well that's, that's the whole point of this video, right? If this one right here being potted, I'm not gonna be able to like really get in there. This, I just need to pull it on up, get it out of here. Typically using a spade would be best for something like this, particularly if they're in the ground because that's gonna prevent the branches from snapping and everything too much. I'm just gonna kinda get in there with my hands like a bear claw and scoop it out. Yeah, that'll lift out pretty easily. I'm not gonna have to do too much effort since it's in a pot, I'm not gonna have to go through too much. If I didn't have anything else growing in this pot, then I could, would you focus please? <laughs> then I could just take the pot and uh, cut, let the foliage go back a little bit, cut the rest of it off and store it someplace that stays above 60 degrees and just let it chill until springtime. But I have other things in this pot that I need to do some other things with. So I prefer just to store the bulbs as they are. Unpotted with the rest of all my others. All right, and then once I have my bulbs ready, then I just go in, get as much of the soil out from around those bulbs as I can. Sometimes there are lots of little guys in there and those are things I like to watch out for. This pot is also teeming with earwigs. So I'm trying to be careful because those little suckers bite and it hurts. Yeah, the earwigs were a big problem this year. That's another reason that I kind of want to just lift these and store the bulbs separately. And I do like to give them a good rinse once I've gotten most of the soil out, but I like to tease the soil out first because I can get any teeny tiny little bitty tubers that are in there. Sometimes these little guys, when I flush the soil out from around these bulbs, these will get washed away with the rest of the soil and I won't even know what they're there. So that's why I like to go ahead and get as much of that out before rinsing them off. And just take the hose and just basically rinse all that soil out. The whole reason I'm doing that is because I, well, want to be able to trim these roots off. And sometimes I don't even bother trimming the roots off yet because the next step here is to go in here, cut the foliage off and trim the roots back. I usually do prefer to go ahead and trim the roots first because it's a little bit easier when you can hold on to the foliage above the plant, help keep your hands steady. And then I go ahead and cut all the leaves off. And then I just place them somewhere where they can sit and dry out for about a week. Temperatures need to be above 60. And then these roots will shrivel up some more and they can be pulled and cut off. It's simple stuff, but these need to dry out. So I will be putting these in my house because nighttime temperatures are dipping into the 40s right now. I'll throw them on top of a paper towel someplace where nothing can get to it, meaning dogs, cats, children, because all parts of the caladium are toxic. Definitely something to keep away from curious mouths. Hey, but good thing I have a whole entire milk crate here that is absolutely full of caladiums that I pulled last week. I've gotten the soil out of most of them. I have the foliage on them still because there's a couple different types in here and I want to be able to make sure I package them up separately. Yeah, typically, I would cut that foliage off before putting them in. Like I said, just wanted to keep them separate. All right, and here you can kind of see how those roots look once they've dried up a little bit more on those plants. And then just like with the other ones, but kind of in opposite order since they've already dried or have started drying, I need to get this foliage off of there it's best to do that before drying them because well you we don't want the plant trying to survive and sucking up energy from those bulbs the thing is the temperatures have been cool enough that these have already started to put themselves into a dormancy once it like i said once it starts to drop below 60 they'll do that on their own so uh, that shouldn't be too much of an issue i wouldn't let this go on for too long though like a week is about as far as i would push it yeah see that just getting all the foliage off the top I usually try and cut them a little bit shorter than this, but it had some offshoots coming up on it. So I was like, yeah, it's fine. It's gonna be stored someplace dry. It's not really a big deal. However, 
Had that been trimmed and given a week to dry, then these center pieces that are in here would shrivel more and could pull the excess papery stuff off of them. So because of that, I will actually probably go ahead and give these just a few more days to dry, but just for the sake of the video, we'll go ahead and package them up so we can talk about that. There are a few different ways you can do this. Personally, I like to just use a cardboard box. Paper bags work fine also. You can use a canvas bag too, that would be fine. The main thing is just that they're stored in something that's breathable. Don't wanna put them in something that's plasticky or something that's gonna hold on to too much moisture. Oh, sorry about that. Karen open my bag of perlite and then I go ahead and I put perlite in here. It doesn't have to be a ton, just enough so that there's not a ton of contact between the tubers in here, just to space them out a little bit more. This will help kind of keep it so that some air can move around them during the winter time. It's not gonna hold on to too much moisture. That's the whole point is just, they need to stay nice and dry. And you don't have to use something like perlite. Plenty of people, even I sometimes don't use uh, perlite. I'll just store them in a paper bag and just kind of let them be, roll the dice with them. But this way seems to work fairly well. It's the way I've had the most success. Like I've never had any issues with rot is what I'm trying to say when I've stored them this way. Typically that's not too much of an issue regardless because make sure they're nice and dry when you put them away and you don't get moisture on them and they do okay. And of course label your box my handwriting's terrible. Doesn't matter as long as I'm the one who can read it that's all that matters. I usually put them in my garage which stays above freezing, but it's best to keep them someplace that stays above 60. My garage sometimes drops into the 50s, but the whole area is heated for my other tropicals, so I've never had that problem. But you can put them in a basement somewhere, put them in a closet, just as long as it's dark, dry, and like I said, above 60, really above 50 is probably fine. And the, that's it. <laughs> that's terrible. I wasn't trying to write pretty on there. I was just, the whole point was to get it labeled. I don't tape the box up because like I said, having some airflow in there is a good thing. I don't bother with sulfur powders or anything like that. One, because it's toxic and I don't like to handle sulfur powder unless I absolutely have to. Sometimes you can use cinnamon on that little white tip like I showed before where it still needs to dry out a little bit. You could dab some cinnamon on there, but keep it away from the bulbs. You don't want to totally dehydrate the bulbs. They'll dry out and go dormant on their own. That was something I meant to mention when I was looking at those corms before. And then I just take this box and put it someplace that's dark and it'll stay above 50 degrees. A lot of sites say to keep them above 60. I've never had that problem. My garage is where I put these and uh, it gets pretty drafty in there. I have a grow space in there that stays really warm, but I don't put my bulbs that are being stored in the warm area. They just go against the shelf near the garage door. And whenever that opens, there's lots of cold drafts and things like that. So I think the main thing is just keep them probably above 40, 50 degrees and dry and dark. They'll be okay. They need two months to rest and then they can get going again. Just eight weeks and that's it. There was more I was going to talk about, but I feel like looking at a box is pretty boring. Uh, just real quick, I've had people ask me before about growing their caladiums in the house and how do you do that during the winter time? Sort of a complicated thing to talk about because they really don't make the best houseplants during the winter time. Caladiums are pre-programmed. The common commercial caladiums. There are lots and lots and lots of varieties out there. So there's going to be some variation, of course. But just speaking generally about the caladiums, they really prefer a dormancy. So uh, you can keep them growing year round. I've had them grow year round before just because they were underplanted around things that needed to stay warm and keep growing all year and I didn't manage to pull them. Just the growth tends to be kind of leggy, kind of wonky, and uh, that bulb's not getting its rest period to kind of reinvigorate itself and get going again for the next year. So I prefer to let them go dormant, but you don't necessarily have to. You can give it a shot. Just don't expect them to look really nice because they typically don't during the winter time. You never let them experience that cold. Gosh, that's such an ugly thing to look at. If you never let them experience that cold, then uh, they may not be triggered into their dormancy. I don't, I've had them in warm areas all year round and they still were like okay it's time it's that time of year we're gonna go to sleep now but like i said there are different varieties lots of different hybrids out there so there's no guarantee that that's going to happen but it technically usually should happen does that make sense i'm saying they prefer a winter dormancy but they don't necessarily have to have it but for better looking plants it's best to give them a winter dormancy that could have just said that all along anyways y'all get it store in your caladium bulbs 
pretty simple. Like I said, you don't have to use the perlite and everything. I just like to do that so that they're spaced out a little bit more and you don't have to use a cardboard box. You can use a paper bag, a canvas bag. The main thing is just to get them out of the ground before it gets too cold and uh, cut everything off of them and let it dry out thoroughly before you package them up because you don't want moisture in there. That's the main thing. You just don't want moisture in there or else they'll rot. Comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. Or just say hi, I love talking to everybody. I hate this, it's just a box. Let's go over here and look at the Monstera, that's a lot better. And don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up, it makes a really big difference for the videos and for the channel, so thank you for that, I appreciate it. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell, upload multiple times a week, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. All of my social medias linked down below. I use Instagram more than anything else. They usually say there will be updates, but there's not really much to update with on the collagedings. <laughs> Is that what I wrote there? Y'all get it. I like the story features on there and it's fun having conversations on there too. Instagram's a little bit easier to converse on than YouTube sometimes. YouTube's gonna be kind of finicky with giving me the comments. Let me know when I have them. Really adding my reply seems to be a problem. I reply and then I go back and there's no I don't know what that's about. Anyways, I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Oh, last note. This is also pretty similar to how you would store Kalakaja bulbs. Not all Kalakajas produce a bulb anymore though. Some of the newer hybrids don't really put more, much of a bulb out, so that's something to look out for. And this is also very similar to what I do with my Kirkma Elizabethfolias, the Siam Tulip Gingers. Pretty similar situation there. I just dig them up, dry them out, clean them up, and store them like above 40 to 50. Like I said though, all the internet says to keep them above 60. I never do and they're always fine, but y'all let me know about that. Maybe some other people have some insight on that one. I said it hasn't been an issue, but maybe it's just the types I'm growing. My main objective is just always to keep them frost free at like the bare minimum. All right, as always and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.